Shorts test is so important because shorts still dominates our industry in faults, whether it be um, solder issues like shorts, too much solder, uh, insufficient solder causing opens, solder problems dominate our industry. Shorts is so important. So you can imagine that it takes a lot of tests though to make sure that a board doesn't have a short on it. So if you have 100 nodes on your board, ICT will give you 100% coverage on that, whereas flying probe tests typically does not. And there's a reason. Um, ICT can do shorts test on a 100 node board in a few milliseconds, basically because it already has access to all the nodes, whereas flying probe test has to go hit each node one at a time. So what we usually do at, at flying probe test is to compromise that coverage and only look for the tests that are nets that are likely to short. For example, um, on our 100 node board, how many total tests would you have to do? Well, if you add one, two, three, four, all the way through, eight, 98, 99, and 100, just add all those numbers up, you get 5,050. So one way to estimate that is n squared divided by two. So if you have 100 nodes, you square that, you get 10,000, divided by that by two, you get 5,000. So about 5,000 tests you'd have to perform to test every node to every other node to make sure they're not shorted. Well, I need to compromise that on, on flying probe test, um, mainly to save test time. But I don't want to also beat up the board too much by hitting pads over and over. I can damage the board doing that. So what most people do with flying probe test is you take two approaches. Um, uh, one of, one of those approaches, just look for adjacent pins. So where are shorts likely to be? Well, from this pin to the pins right ne next to it. That's where you're going to have your solder splashes and other solder issues that cause shorts. Maybe um, a short to a via, though. Wait a minute, adjacent pin shorts wouldn't catch that. So another approach would be to do a distance study. So from this pin all the way to everything else within a distance and on that same net, say a resistor pad and a certain distance within that resistor pad, let's just do the arithmetic or let the software do the arithmetic and generate the shorts test. Almost all flying probe testers do that sort of thing. It's also important on ICs, especially the ones that interface to a connector, to test them to make sure you don't have shorts to ground or shorts to power. That usually means the IC has been blown and that is a very common failure. So that would be a good thing to add to your flying probe test algorithms if you can. Not every node on every board, you wouldn't have to do that. But it would be wise to do that instead um, just on the nodes that interface to the world where somebody might uh, uh, have ESD by touching a connector or uh, damage a board um, by other ways, such as uh, uh, hooking up a cable wrong or something like that that might cause the IC to blow.